Hey, how's it going, YouTube? I'm back in the video, and today I'm gonna be talking about a NBA mock draft. Now, I did make one of these before the uh, draft lottery actually happened, and if you didn't see that, go check that out. It did pretty well on the channel, but now this is going to be after the draft lottery. The reason this video took so long is because one, they just pushed back the draft lottery due to the coronavirus, and two, because I had to actually make the video, so that's why it's a little bit after the draft lottery. And now, this video isn't necessarily what I think is going to happen. It's mainly what I I would do if I was the GM of these teams and who I would draft. So um, some of these picks might not be what is going to happen or what I think is going to happen, but it's going to be the picks that I personally would do if I was the GMs of these teams. So yeah, I'm be getting to all that in this video. All 15 picks in the lottery, well 14, but I'm just in including Orlando because they're pretty much a lottery team anyway. So yeah, I'm going to include all 15 picks in this video. So if you like the video at any point, hit the like button and subscribe button. It means the absolute world to me. And without further ado, without worrying on too much, just get right into this video. Okay, so with the number one overall pick, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves going with Anthony Edwards. Now, the reason I have them going with Anthony Edwards is because, I mean, he really fits what they need. Some people say they're going to take LaMelo, but I really don't think LaMelo Ball and D'Angelo Russell would mix well together at all. I don't think that would be a good duo to have and i think anthony edwards could pair good with d'lo and carl anthony towns now although the defense could be a little suspect at times i think you can definitely see all the tools anthony edward has now although i'm not fully 100 percent sold on edwards saying he's going to be a superstar like some people he definitely has the most potential and a ton of tools to work on and if he does work hard enough he will be a star in the nba he has elite athleticism he's extremely strong the dude is very intelligent when it comes to basketball iq he has so much potential i think you have to pick him due to how big his upside is i mean i really think he could develop very well with cat and d'lo and really get this team going and make maybe make them a playoff team now i don't know how long it's going to take anthony edwards to develop i don't know if he's going to be a rookie of the year type guy just due to how much he does have to develop because he still doesn't have a great jump shot he needs to work a little bit better to refine his offensive game and like i said he can zone out on defense but his potential is there to be an elite defender to be elite shooter to be an elite just everything really he has those tools he's like an andrew wiggins but hopefully this time they he can actually uh, like capitalize on all the amount of talent he has and now with the number two overall pick, we have the Golden State Warriors going with James Wiseman. Now, I have them going with James Wiseman because really he is the only player that makes sense. This is assuming they don't trade the pick, but James Wiseman is literally the only player in this situation that makes any sense. They're not going to go LaMelo because they have Steph Curry. They're not going to go Obi Toppin because although Draymond Green had a very down year, he also was put in a situation to fail with Curry and Clay being out and making him the main guy, which he just is not. So with James Wiseman being on the team, this is going to give them a starting five of Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, and James Wiseman, which would give them a legitimate five starters for the first time in years. Because, I mean, usually they would have someone like Kevon Looney throwing him a lob every once in a while, have him get some rebounds, but that's about it. Well, James Wiseman, he'll be able to get rebounds. on Defensively, he'll be able to lock down the paint. He'll be able to get tons of rebounds. He'll be able to be a dominant force in the paint. So if there's a game where Steph and Clay are off, well, now you can defer to someone like James Wiseman to protect, get in the paint, really help score, get rebounds, help dominate in the paint, which is going to help a lot. Because now you can't just worry about the perimeter, now you have to worry about James Wiseman. Wiseman is going to be probably the best center in this draft. Eventually, maybe not year one, but he is going to develop. He has all the pieces to develop and be a very, very good player. And I could definitely see him being a great piece for this Golden State Warriors going in the future, especially because Steph, I mean, Steph, Clay, and Draymond are all kind of getting up there in age so if james wiseman could be their next franchise player that would be huge for the warriors and now number three is going to be the charlotte harness now i had them going one of two ways i said they could either pick on yekka kongu or lamello ball and the only reason i went with a yanka kongu is because i mean they just had a breakout player in Devonte graham who just had the best season of his career and is extremely young and has tons of potential and 
I don't think they want to stun his growth by bringing in another point guard. Plus, they just gave Terry Rozier a ginormous contract just to come off their bench pretty much now. So I think they have their point guard situation pretty much figured out for the future. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if they pick LaMelo because LaMelo could potentially be a superstar, but I would go with the safe pick in Ayeka Kongu, especially because of a couple reasons. One reason just being that their current center is Cody Zeller, and Ayeka Kongu is most definitely going to be better than Cody Zeller. The reason I say this is because he's probably the safest pick in this NBA draft, at least defensively, because I mean, I think defensively, he's already pro ready. You know what you're getting from the dude. He has an extremely low ceiling, but an extremely high floor. He might be a rookie of the year candidate due to how NBA ready he is. He's going to be able to protect shot. I mean, protect the paint. He's going to be able to block shots. He's going to be able to get rebounds. You know what you're getting out of him, and he is an extremely safe pick. You're going to get a starting level center, maybe even an above average center if you pick this guy. He's going to be one of the better defensive uh, players in the entire draft when it comes to the paint. One of the, my favorite centers and players in this draft just because I know how safe he is. And the reason I say we go with the safe pick is because when you look at the Charlotte Hornets, when they take risk 99.9% .9 of the time since Michael Jordan's been the owner, those draft picks have not worked out. Kimball Walker is the only draft pick they have that was in the top four or anything that worked out. Their last top four pick was Cody Zeller. So they cannot mess this up. They need an elite center. That Yonke Akangu could be that center they need to hold down the fort, be that anchor, and really be able to start building off and making a good foundation. And I think he would fit the Charlotte Hornets very, very well. And I love him. I think he's NBA ready. I think he's going to be good no matter what team he goes to. I think he's just going to be a very, very solid player. Not a superstar, not an all-star, but a very solid player. Now with the fourth overall pick, I have the Chicago Bulls for selecting Devin Vassell. Now, I had them going one of two ways. They're both going to be shooting guards, but it's going to be Isaac Kerr or Devin Vassell. But the reason I have them going with Devin is because I feel like he has more offensively to offer than Isaac Kerr. I think he has a better jump shot. I don't think. He actually does just have a better jump shot. He's just as athletic. He might be a better defender, and if not, he's barely a very close second. The dude's a great defender. Very long, very athletic. I mean, he's probably the second best, if not the best, defensive player in this draft all around, at least perimeter-wise. I mean, the dude's athletic, like I said. He can shoot the ball, and he just offers more than Isaac Okoro does offensively, and I think he would be great for the Chicago Bulls team. Now, I, what would they would do, I don't exactly know, as I mean, they would probably go Kobe White, Vassal, Zach Levine, Larry Marketing, and then Wendell Carter Jr. I would assume that's what they would do, but I mean, that defense could be kind of sub because Zach Levine isn't the best defender. Kobe White's not the best defender. So I don't know how they would go with that. Where they trade Zach Levine, no one really knows. But I do think Devin Vassell would be a great pick for the Chicago Bulls here. He fits them perfectly. And he is also one of my favorite players in this entire draft. Now, at number five, I have the Cleveland Cavaliers going with Aaron Naismith. Now, hold up before you destroy me in the comment section. I don't think they should pick Aaron Naismith with the fifth overall pick, but I most definitely think they should trade down in this draft. I don't think they should select anybody here. They shouldn't go guard because they've gone guard with two top five picks back to back years with Colin Sexton and um, Darius Garland. You can't give up on them this early unless you trade them, and I don't think they will, so you're not going guard. They have Kevin Love, who no one's going to trade for, so I wouldn't pick a power forward. Andre Drummond's with you for another year. I wouldn't pick a center, and I hate this small forward class outside. Like, I don't think there's any elite top-tier small forwards, but I do want them to go small forward. And Aaron Naismith, it could be a very solid 3 and D player in here, and they could easily trade down, get another high pick for future years to come, or just get more draft capital in the years to come, plus pick Aaron Naismith a little bit later in this draft by drafting down. But don't think any way am I saying they should pick him that high. If they do pick that high, they should definitely go a different direction. But I do not think they should go Aaron Naismith. Most likely, they're going to go with someone like Denny Avangita, who I don't like at all in this draft. But that's probably what they're going to do. But I think they should trade the pick. So with the number six overall pick, we have the Atlanta Hawks going Isaac Okoro. Now, they badly badly need a defensive presence on this roster let's be honest although Trey Young is a stud offensively don't get me wrong 
The dude doesn't play defense, and he's a terrible defender. I don't care what you say. He's never going to be a good defender. He's not a good defender. He's one of the best offensive guards, but with no defense, offense can only get you so far. Well, Isaac Okoro just so happens to be pretty much on the complete opposite end. Give you much, at least shooting-wise. He can't shoot very good at all or consistently, but he is um, very known to be one of the best perimeter defenders, if not the best perimeter defender in this draft. He's pretty much Devin Vassell without a jump shot, and he could potentially develop that jump shot and become a very, very good 3 and D player in the NBA in the future. So I think with his athleticism, his defense, his drive to play defense, I think the Atlanta Hawks could benefit having him hugely. Just, I think he would be a huge addition to this Atlanta Hawks team. John Collins would be healthy. Clint Capella would be healthy. They would have him all year. Trey Young would get his um, right hand man to help defend the best player. Trey Young would get a lot less pressure off of him now because now Isaac Curry would be able to guard the best man instead of having to put Trey Young, who's not very good at defense, on him. I think he would just help the team immensely. And I wouldn't be, I, I don't think Isaac Curry is ever going to be a superstar, but I do think he could potentially be a very solid player, which they need. He could be like an Andre Rose person type player and that's what Atlanta needs right now. So with the number seven overall pick, we have the Detroit Pistons going LaMelo Ball. Now, y'all might be like, well, LaMelo Ball kind of fell, didn't he? Well, I mean, somebody always falls in the draft, and I think LaMelo's going to be that, not because of his lack of talent, because of his lack of need. And LaMelo Ball really fits perfectly with the Detroit Pistons. Now, although they have Derrick Rose and they do have other holes on this roster, I don't think that they're going to go anywhere else but LaMelo. The Pistons desperately need excitement on this team, and who more exciting than LaMelo Ball? He's a very good scorer, very flashy player. He's He can play defense um, despite contrary belief. He is a very good player and could potentially be a superstar point guard, and I am pretty high on LaMelo. I think he could be good, and I think he would fit Detroit perfectly. Alright, so now with the eighth overall pick we have the new york knicks who i feel so bad for they dropped all the way to eight but i mean i think that they can still get a solid player and if not one of the best point guards in the draft and with that being said i have them picking killian hayes I absolutely love Killian Hayes. He can do anything you need him to do. He's good on defense. He's a good scorer. He has great court vision. He's athletic. He can score. The dude's quick, and he would help RJ Hampton a lot. He would be able to get RJ Hampton the ball in better spots, take pressure off RJ Hampton from having to run the offense. I think Killian Hayes would be the perfect fit for this team. Now, yes, they could also go power forward and try to select Obi Toppin, but I think Julius Randle is power forward is not anywhere near their biggest need at all and I think Mitchell Robinson and Julius Randle can be decent going into the season and you can make the playoffs with those two being your bigs so I think Killian Hayes would be the pick to go with I absolutely love him and I think he's going to be a steal for the Knicks if they pick him at this eighth spot and now the number nine overall pick, we have the Washington Wizards going with Sadiq Bey. Now the Wizards need a small forward very, very badly, and Sadiq Bey with his shooting ability could be a huge help to this team. Now with John Wall coming back, he could even just benefit even more, because now that's going to spread the court for John Wall when he comes back. Bradley Bill is going to be able to get more open shots. Roy, Rui Hachimura is going to be, the paint's going to be even more open because the court's going to be more spread out. And I think Sadiq Bey, being one of the best shooters, if not the best shooter in this class, could be a huge benefit to this team. Now, although Sadiq Bey isn't going to give you star level numbers, he isn't going to be a star. He's not going to be an all-star. He's not going to be nothing like that. But he is going to be a very solid role player who can shoot the ball. And I don't, I mean, I'm not high on him, but I'm also not low on him. I think he is going to be kind of a role player. And now the number 10 overall pick i have the phoenix suns going with obi toppin now this would be literally the ideal pick for the phoenix suns as you would now be pairing up deandre Aiden, who's already one of the more dominant centers in the entire nba very underrated but he is a very very solid player double double machine now you'd be giving him obi toppin who i think's potential to be the best player in this draft his athleticism is second to none in this draft class he's very good on the offensive end he can block shots now yes he needs work on his perimeter defense but he does have the tool speed and athleticism to work on the perimeter defense it's not like he's incapable of doing it he could very much be a very good defender in the nba if he really puts the work in he's already going to be one of the best offensive players in this draft i love obi toppin and if the phoenix suns could get him that would be literally perfect for this team i mean ricky rubio devin booker cam 
Johnson, Obi Toppin, DeAndre Aiden. That's a playoff team. I think Obi Toppin could be the rookie of the year. This would just be a perfect pick for the Phoenix Suns. And now with the number 11 overall pick, I have the Spurs selecting Denny Avangita. Now for a lot of y'all, y'all are like, you're crazy. He's not going to fall this far. And I know Denny Avangita is not going to fall this far. But I personally do not like him at all all he doesn't like it i he just doesn't pass what i like to really mark down and i think he's going to be a bust now am i saying it's guaranteed no he'll probably end up being in the mvp now that i said he's a bust but i just don't like him but the reason i have the spurs picking him here is because who's better to develop a foreign player than the san antonio spurs the spurs have tons of experience doing that and i mean it's not like he's all bad he has pro experience he's a smart defender he can shoot when he's open his ball his very high, high basketball IQ so it's not like he's going to be helpless and not only even am I saying he's going to be a bad player but for all the hype he has I don't think he's going to be as good or live up to the hype that people are putting on to him for all pick I have Jaden McDaniels and the reason I have him here is because I mean although he is one of the biggest projects in this draft he also has one of the highest upsides out of anyone in this draft as well Jaden McDaniels I mean he has every tool you want him to have he's a very tall player very lengthy extremely athletic can handle the ball can cut shoot he can do all of that but he's not very consistent at doing it but and he is very raw as well but he does have one of the highest ceilings in the draft class if not the highest ceiling the only problem is his floor is extremely low he's so raw but if he could just develop that for a few years he might even go to the g league for the first season or two but if he can just develop it and build on his game he could legitimately be the steal of this draft and be one of the best players in this draft class and few years into the future and now going into the home stretch we have the last three picks i have the 13th overall pick the new orleans Pelicans, selecting tyrese hellburden now although it is likely he will go a little bit higher than this i would love him with the new orleans pelicans he would be a great backup for um lonzo ball if they don't trade him which i highly doubt they do but i mean if they do trade lonzo he would be a great player to replace them as i mean he has great basketball iq he can shoot the ball even though his form's a little off which is a little bit of a coincidence if he's replacing lonzo he's a very good defender he's very athletic he's very very solid as a point guard and if he had to be backup i think he would learn very well behind lonzo and could be one of the better backups in the entire nba if he had to but i also think think he is a starting level center and I would love I mean point guard and I would love to see him get a starting role one day as I do like him a lot I think he potentially has all-star potential and I really like Tyrese Hilburton as a prospect and now with the 14th overall pick, we have the Boston Celtics selecting R.J. Hampton. R.J. Hampton, all before he went overseas, was projected to be a top 10, top 5 pick. Well, he's overseas really did hurt him. But I mean, right here would be a very good pick for them. They could develop him in the G League behind Kemba Walker and really just help them pick him up and maybe get a good backup punt guard or shooting guard. R.J. Hampton could potentially develop. I don't, I'm not very high on him. I don't really like what I saw film-wise or anything. But I do think he could develop into a solid player if he does does develop behind Kemba for a few years and now the 15th overall pick we have the Orlando Magic selecting Cole Anthony now the reason I added them is because I didn't want Cole Anthony falling out of this video because I do like him but he's also one of my least favorite point guards out of the point guard class because I think it's a very strong point guard class now I do think Cole Anthony is a great scorer I think he has a lot of um, upside he has very good passing ability I just don't like him as much as Tyrese Hellbarden, Killian Hayes, Lamelo Ball players like that I think he is a little bit better than RJ Hampton probably but i think rj hampton gives you a little bit more defensively as well so that's why i had them going above him but i do like cole anthony and do think he could be a solid point guard in the nba so if you guys did like the video at any point hit the like button and subscribe button it mean the world to me if you agreed with me disagreed with me comment that in the comment section below it mean the world to me hit the like button subscribe button hope you have a blessed day have a blessed day see you have a blessed day see you in the next video goodbye boo blah